Hi everyone, Ronnie from IKM. So in today's video, what we want to talk to you about is a different lens through which to view forward flexion or the toe touch. Now, when we're in a clinic with a client or in a gym situation with a client and we ask them to touch their toes, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of information are we trying to gather from that movement? Are we trying to gather information about the length of the hamstrings, about the ability of the ribcage to, to flex and depress, their ability to, to allow the lumbar extensors to, to relax, or do we need to take a few steps back to really understand what's going on in the individual's movement system before they actually bend forward and look at things not purely from a neurological perspective but understand how the nervous system and its influence over the tissues throughout the body will influence the strategy someone uses to bend over and touch their toes. Right? And, and this can actually give us much more, much more important and helpful information in actually identifying what kind of interventions we need to use with that client going forward, all right? So if we have a client standing, let's, let's use this kind of visual graphic. When we have a client standing, we have to understand that there already is stress acting on their system. And it's not just stress that's intermittent, it's a consistent source of stress. And that consistent source of stress is gravity. Right? So you have a constant gravitational force trying to pull your body down towards the ground. Okay, and then if you think about how that influences the strategies that the individual will use to maintain an upright position, that's going to have a massive influence on how they bend forward. And what I mean by that is individuals can express sustainable strategies to keep their body upright or they can express unsustainable strategies to keep the body upright. And that's, that's for another video. But if we think of it this way, if we have a client bending forward down to touch their, their toes, for example, Right? If we understand gravity, if we understand what the system is trying to do, it's trying to maintain an upright position before they actually bend forward. And when you bend forward, what you're essentially asking the, the individual to do is to fall. Right? And when an individual is trying to maintain an upright position against gravity, falling is one of the biggest threats to the system. Falling is something that the individual does not want to do. So bending forward is not something that the individual will do very lightly. Because what you're asking it to do is you're asking it to take this important piece of equipment here inside the skull, the brain, and pull that closer towards the ground. And that's, like I said, it's not something that the individual is going to do very, very lightly. Because again, we, we spend most of our time trying to, at least when we're standing up, and especially when we're in pain, we don't want to add any kind of extra stress onto the system. And trying to bring the body closer to the ground is, is certainly going to add an extra element of stress or threat on our system. And when we're expressing pain and we don't have an awful lot of resources to manage other stressors, it's not something that the individual might do very efficiently, you can say. Right? And so this will encourage us to step further back and not necessarily look at, okay, can their spinal extensors lengthen very well? Are their hamstrings able to lengthen very well? But we need to understand, is this indiv individual able to manage gravity well before they can actually bend forward? Right? So we need to understand the workload acting on our body before we ask an individual to bend forward. Right? And so what we, what we typically like to look at here initially when we're looking at somebody flex forward is, is not necessarily can the spinal extensors lengthen or can the, the tissues along the posterior chain, you can say, lengthen well. But what we want to understand is that when an individual bends forward, they're taking the spine from more of a close packed position where there's less variability. If you were to extend and can really take your body into an upright position, you're taking the spine into a very close packed position where there's less, in extension, there's less possibilities to adapt to things and that's 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 good for the nervous system in the short term especially if it's someone dealing with some kind of unpleasant experience so what happens is when you're bending forward you're taking the, the spine the midline from a closed pack position to an open pack position so in that moment you're adding a lot more degrees of freedom around the midline and so you can see potentially two strategies in that moment when the individual bends forward if their nervous system doesn't feel comfortable allowing for the, the midline to go from that closed pack position into an open pack position, what we might see is you might see an increase in tension at the posterior spine. So you might see an individual 
extend their spine to basically fight gravity as they flex forward, which is not necessarily uh, a very sustainable strategy in the long run. But it doesn't mean that we have to go in and massage or to stretch these tissues. We need to take a, take a couple of further steps back and understand that when all this mass here, if we were to draw a dotted line here, everything above the lower limb here will make up what we like to call, and again, what they call in, in motor learning research and, and movement control research, is the hat segment. So your head, your arms, and your trunk. And your head, your arms, and your trunk make, makes up two thirds of your overall body mass. So that's a lot of mass to fall forward towards the ground. So in that moment, when you bend forward, you take the spine from a closed pack position to an open pack position, what we want the individual to be able to do is to trust their lower limb, to be able to trust the ability of the tissues, the structures and systems of the lower limb to be able to control and decelerate the forward flexion of everything above the lower limb. Okay, so if you're seeing an awful lot of excessive tension around the spine, if you're seeing the rib cage pop up as they, as they flex forward, don't just go straight into thinking that, okay, I need to, to work around the rib cage, I need to work with breathing, or I need to try and relax everything around the spine, but think about it from a perspective of, does that nervous system, does that individual actually trust the lower limb to be able to decelerate the head, the arms, and the trunk as you flex forward? That's the most important question at least from, from our perspective, because you can do all the work you want around the midline, but when you stand back up again, you have to tolerate load through your, your lower limb, and that has to be able to, to control and decelerate everything from the lower limb upwards. So just think about it from a standpoint of, okay, do I need to do a lot of rib cage work? Do I need to do a lot of breathing work? Which is obviously very, very important, but we need to look at it within the context of what's happening throughout the whole body. We need to look at it through the context of what kind of constants or consistent sources of stress are always acting on our system before the individual actually bends forward. And do they have the capacity to allow the lower limb to decelerate the, the trunk moving forward? Not just the trunk, but the head, the arms and the trunk, which is a lot of mass. So this just allows us to, to take a few steps further back and understand what's going on through the whole body with forward flexion. And not necessarily looking at it from a standpoint, okay, if somebody can't bend over and touch their toes, that again, we need to, we need to stretch and massage the, the posterior spine. Ob obviously that might be warranted, but we need to not only look at it as the one thing, but how does that fit within the context of everything else? We need to not only think, okay, maybe we need to stretch the hamstrings. It's very rarely a case where we need to stretch the ham hamstrings, but we need to allow the lower limb to be able to take on a role that proves to the nervous system up here that it can take on that, it can express that capacity to decelerate the head and the arms and the trunk as it moves forward, all right? So we just, we like to, to not necessarily narrow our focus too soon when we're looking at forward flexion, but we need to step back and understand what's the global strategy that the individual is using here. And can we use that information to merge with other local strategies potentially around the midline? And then when we can merge those together with local strategies and global strategies, then we have the potential to facilitate much more change in the individual, in individuals who may be perhaps for dealing with lower back pain or hip pain or any kind of issues that are related to their ability to, to manage their body mass, okay? So again, just a, a different way to look at things away from a, a perspective only looking at what muscles need to be able to stretch to get you into that position. But can we step back and, and look at things from a more global perspective to allow us to gather much more information about what's happening in our client's movement system?